Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning. Um, good morning to the members of the committee. Good morning to the public, to the um, evidence leaders, um, everyone who's in this platform. Um, Chairperson, I decided to attend the meeting physically today because last time I was here, you, um, on the 3rd of April, I appeared uh, virtually when you uh, shouted at me and you muted me. Um, I must indicate that this came as a shock because the evidence leaders were allowed in the so-called committee meeting whilst I was kicked out. This inquiry is about my possible removal from office. So it is uh, strange that I can have any, or it can have any business without uh, me. So what I wanted to tell the committee on that day was firstly that uh, the so-called committee meeting was illegal and that the responsibility for affording me legal representation was not on my, um, in fact, uh, it was not um, ordered by me personally, but it was the decision of the Constitutional Court. Chairperson, you, when members raised the process or some of them, you decided to continue with the inquiry. You stated publicly that I would be given an opportunity to respond to the six day presentation of the evidence leaders. And that has turned out to be uh, not true because the proposed uh, schedule you released last week does not cater for that right of reply. Secondly, you have unilaterally decided that all my outstanding evidence must be finished in four days, irrespective of the major topics which we will have still have to cover, the CX matter, the freedom matter, HR related matters of which 15 witnesses were called over a period of approximately 25 days. And I'm expected to respond to that in four days. Um, the worst was the recent um, decree from above that it has been unilaterally decided that my legal representation must be limited to the 4 million, which uh, is the surplus from PPSA. Um, I must indicate to a person that uh, that process was determined, yes, with everyone trying to locate funds to deal with the process. But uh, it's so unfortunate that um, I have to come here before the committee so that we can deliberate on this matter to remind the committee on what process is being followed um, in um, appointing a legal representation. Remember the letter which was written by the deputy public protector to me on the 1st of March, copying you, the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Justice and the speaker, and further the um, letter which was written by the CEO of the Public Protector to Sianejo Atenis, informing them about not having the funds to continue beyond the 31st of March. So um, that is the key issue which we need to discuss here. And uh, I must indicate that at the beginning of this process, uh, I was still in the office when um, you wrote to me after the judgment of the Concord, you asked whether I will have any legal representation and who is the legal representation. I was still within the office. I had to request um, the CEO as the person who's responsible for appointing a legal representation. And uh, uh, by then, the CNRO was busy with all the litigation and legal services and myself, we uh, then agreed that they will proceed with this uh, inquiry. 
then the attorneys are the ones who are briefing the advocate. And that's when they also asked which advocate I would prefer to use which was um, then advocating Bofu and a letter was written to you and the committee and we informed you about the legal representation. Currently, I do not have any legal representation. In any event, uh, on Friday, the committee was served with an agent court application to resolve the impasse of the funding and the illegal committee meeting. Um, we cannot go forward before the issues are resolved. Uh, why I'm saying that? Your letter, Chairperson, and your interviews where you were saying, um, you know, um, the Concord judgment, including the Speaker and even the President saying um, the Concord was not specific who should be funding um, my legal representation. So that is an opportunity for them to clarify that. And um, I also want to indicate that uh, the letters which were written to the speaker was because this is a committee of parliament and I'm accounting to parliament and I had expected the speaker to consider that very seriously, um, considering the fact that this is a committee of parliament, but um, we also decided to not uh, assist and intervene in the in the process and as you would know that um the issue of my unlawful suspension is still pending before the constitutional court especially after the unlawful suspension um by the president which the western cape high court decided on the 9th of september 2022 that I should have returned to work and DA and the president and the speaker applied for an agent application. Unfortunately, um, it's up to six months now. I'm still waiting for that uh, particular agent uh, judgment, which uh, I think was going to help in uh, resolving um, the impasse and the violation of my right to work and uh, human dignity. So I think on that uh, particular issue, to, um, I will also be raising a serious uh, complaint, uh, a formal complaint with the JSC, especially on the delay on, on, on this matter, but um, that's another issue which uh, I will deliberate on. But then coming back to the legal representation, how it functions, I hope the evidence leader or your legal services should have advised you, Chairperson, that writing that letter and terminating or then saying there's no fees or there's no funds, uh, for the legal team to proceed. Basically, was terminating the mandate of my legal representation. And that was done by the CEO of the public protector, who is the accounting officer and responsible for the finances of the institution in terms of the PFMA. So firstly, um, the profession, I think uh, possibly even the evidence leaders should have empowered you. Um, they were briefed by the state attorney same applies with my legal counsel, they were briefed by Sianeho. And uh, uh, in public administration, um, the CEO, who is the accounting officer, is responsible for that particular process. So in this particular issue, um, I wonder why the person, uh, I was expected to come back and we are proceeding today. The matter now is that you'd ask what have I done? And I asked why copying Siane Hohen. Um, currently, they are not my attorneys. Um, the SC currently is not my SC as far as this matter is concerned. What should be happening is that Public Protector South Africa, uh, which are also then after receiving the letter, which I didn't receive on the 2nd of May, but then finally I managed to receive it because I was surprised uh, by your letter when you were saying there's money and uh, um, we, we are proceeding and uh, as per the letter of the deputy public protector. So I then um, inquired from the public protector's office, especially on the issue of the traveling arrangements, because I understand there's this meeting and I understand there is money which is availed. And then that's when the deputy public protector res re responded and said, um, they've written a letter, actually even uh, traveling with my protector, it should come out of that particular 4 million, including 
accommodation, including everything. And I've seen where I'm even told to handle this money properly. Firstly, let me start by saying I don't handle any finances as the executive authority. I don't appoint any attorneys as the executive authority. The Public Protector South Africa, they did the process initially. They entered into an agreement with Sianeho because Sianeho was part of the panel of attorneys on the list of the Public Protector. And they then agreed on the fee structure. They then signed the agreement with Sianeho. Uh, in terms of the PFMA, that's the process. They should be following. So we cannot just have a four million which is just being availed and there's no accountability. And in some letter, uh, I'm told I must handle this money uh, properly. I, I don't handle monies. I expect the public protector because when I communicated with them, I requested even the, the list of the panel of attorneys, which was uh, shared with me, I think, uh, on Friday. Uh, midnight uh, or when saturday around uh, i think 12 a.m and for me to check who is the panel of attorneys which is there whether sianeho is still there because basically that termination of their service by the ceo it means that they need to sit down with sianeho they need to if it's sianeho because again it should be the attorney of or the legal team of my choice and sianeho should be briefing um, the legal counsel. So basically, the person I'm sitting here, I don't have the legal team to represent me, and I'm accounting to Parliament. I'm here, and um, again, you've received the necessary court papers, and I think you were asking um, why can they proceed with the matter um, uh, pro bono as they are doing. Uh, unfortunately, this is a parliamentary process. You wanted to hold me to account, and uh, the process has already started. The Crown Court has already decided that uh, you should be availing legal representation, and they've done a lot, actually, which they were not supposed to do, because all these other matters are dealt uh, by them, because I don't have the resources. And that's the only way I could exercise my rights as a citizen of this country, because if my rights are trampled on, I'll have to go back to the same courts. Some of them, they do indeed listen to me. Some of them, they feel uh, it's fine for me to continuously to have my rights being trampled upon. So um, the lawyers have, uh, have not indicated that they, will, they are willing to proceed uh, pro bono you would ask whether did I uh, communicate with them. I haven't communicated to Sianeho, the director specifically, but informally uh, engaged with the legal team. And, and uh, uh, it's not to say we uh, are engaging on them um, coming back. So I think, Chairperson, the, the, the proper uh, way forward in this matter is that uh, the public protector should start that process I think you would also want, and even the Auditor General would want to know how that 4 million which is availed is uh, going to be utilized because uh, the attorney must uh, properly be briefed, the attorney must properly then uh, appoint the um, legal uh, representation, which legal representation indeed to make matters quicker is uh, to uh, uh, indeed uh, brief the, 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 the current um, uh, 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 SC or council, but I can't do that myself because I'm the executive authority. I don't have the right to do that. And uh, surely yourself, I don't know how you operate, but properly you cannot, as a member of parliament, engage and uh, tell what the evidence leaders must be doing. Uh, you, through your legal services, Communicate to state attorney. State attorney engages um, your 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 counsel on what needs to be done and on the briefing which needs to happen. So I I I would then indicate before this committee that um, that's the proper way of of doing that. And uh, uh, lastly, chairperson, I think is the issue of um, um, the, the 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 current arrangement uh, which is there because. 
the deputy public protector writing letters to 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 to, to me and uh, well as well instructing me how to handle the matter um I'm, I'm the public protector of the country. Um, I should be engaged uh, properly, and hence I'm saying I am not willing to engage myself in an unlawful and illegal process, which will put the institution um, to uh, further scrutiny um, on how the money is being uh, utilized. So I think it's very critical that um, the committees and oversight and members of parliament should then um, plead with them also to make sure that they follow the proper process. So, um, attorneys should be properly briefed since they terminated their service. And they wrote a letter to them on the 31st, um, they, actually before the 31st, uh, I think the 30th of March, where they said to them, besides the letter which was written by the Deputy Public Protector, which I responded to, that indeed they don't have money, they cannot continue beyond, but they were asking how much do they need, which is the proper way of asking um, to complete the, 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 the process, this final process. And they couldn't respond because it was when um, there was no uh, agreement with their backroom meeting on uh, the days of my testimony, the dates which are available. So, and then I think that was on the 30th, but on the 31st, they even indicated and stressed that irrespective, we don't have money. So um, that was what uh, transpired Chairperson. So I'm here, uh, I don't have legal representation and I will ask and plead with you that let's postpone um, this hearing let a PPSA uh, follow the proper process, appoint the attorneys, agree on the terms and conditions, appoint and brief the, 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 the legal counsel, and then we can uh, indeed proceed with the, with the hearing. Thank you.